Hey, and welcome to episode 32 of Metal Health. Um, good to uh, good to see that you're actually listening to this in these uh, in these harsh, harsh times. Um, some crazy shit going on, so I thought that we'd uh, we'd kind of address that before going into our usual album reviews. Well, got, well, we've got toilet roll, right? <laughs> we've got toilet roll. Some, some. We're okay. And At the moment. I don't know whether we're like breaching uh, some kind of uh, national... Thing by order. Us, uh, even like doing this. social distancing, we're, yeah, we're right. definitely closer than well, for, six feet together. What's the uh, we're far enough far. apart? What's the we're not. what's the minimum that you've got uh, have, to be as a gathering? What is a gathering? I think we're alright from a gathering because I didn't say it was anything of ten or more, so we're okay from a, how many people in the room. But that's, that's fine. It's the proximity. Yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, crazy shit. So we thought we'd address that. Uh, we were uh, we were meant to be going to a few gigs before recording this, um, so that was going to give us a little bit more to talk about. Yeah, but, it was um, a bit of live review goodness, were not it? It was. A couple. It was going to be a couple of uh, big hitters. A couple of mad days in uh, in Leeds, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nights. We was going to go see uh, Employed to Serve and uh, Palm Reader. One night on yeah. the Saturday night, weren't we? The and then we were going to go see uh, After the Burial and on the Spirit Sunday. Box on the Sunday. All gone. All gone. And I, I understand why, you know, it's a shitty situation. And yes, it sucks for us. And it sucks even worse for the, the bands. for the bands and the promoters and everyone that's actually put this on and, like, you know, gone through Roadies, any kind of arrangement. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, it does blow. Um, unprecedented times, though. I mean, yeah. they'll think of edit. Even when we had the global recession in 2008, yes, that was an economic downturn, but it didn't affect people going out and going to gigs. Or yeah. you might have gone to a, a, not as many mm. because of the recession. You might have kind of, you know, picked and choose a bit more. Watched a wallet. Yeah, a bit more, you yeah. might have been a bit more right. I'm only going to do so many. I can't afford that, and yeah. I'll, I'll bounce on a festival. Only one, only one festival. Yeah. <laughs> Only a T-shirt. I'm not going to yeah. get a hoodie. But you still went, and you, and you still had the option to go. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. It's not even now about you know. There's the option there, and we can't. There's not even the option. But like Luke said, I mean, you know, you, you've got to think for anyone involved in this industry now because yeah, it's just the livelihood <laughs> utterly yeah. wiped out. Even if you do, um, and he's actually, if you can. Help the bands out. Yeah, as buy some of their merch direct yeah. from them. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been seeing um, tweets and Facebook posts and stuff on people like mentioning that hey, if you get cancelled and you, you're going to get reimbursement, that's fine. But why not help the band out and buy them uh, buy a t-shirt with that money that you get back? Because I mean, you're going to spend it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't toss a coin to your witcher. <laughs> Sling twenty bucks <laughs> to your favourite band and buy yeah. a t-shirt. Yeah, seconded. Um. So yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy times. Have we got anything else? Um, well, did we have anything else like in the pipeline for you guys? To so, I know I didn't. Pipeline, <laughs> so it wouldn't be for this episode, but um, very just under a month away, we would have gone and seen Calder Cap. Yes, uh, on, their, well, on their tour, which was titled the um, Euro the Euro Pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god. <laughs> It was there. I, and that's it, they had a song last year called Bring Back the Plague, and it's like, yeah. these motherfuckers knew something. Mm. You know, they're quite prophetic. Um, they also had a song on the last album, not the most recent one, called Plague Born. So I really think they've been trying to tell us something here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's scuppered. You know, that would have been, I think, an episode 33 live review. Um, well, yeah, I think that's it now. I think it's going to very much be. Very quiet on the gig front. It's yeah. going to be all about album reviews, so uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll probably be getting a lot more album reviews from us. Maybe we'll have to uh, bump it up a little bit in the old review stakes. I think it's going to have to be. I think ones where I know that last year because we were doing live reviews, mm. we quite often we would kind of say, oh, "Well, we'll not bother with that. We'll not bother with that." Yeah. And I think now. I think we're now we've got to. the luxury to get yeah. on the go. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> So um, with that in mind, we've actually got three to go through today. Um, mm-hmm. The first came out, oh, we're looking about a month ago now, aren't we? Was it Valentine's Day? I or think... like the week of Valentine's Day yeah, in February? I think so. mm. Yeah, And that is Loathe that we're, gonna, uh, that we're actually going to put on next. Um, what a fucking phenomenal album. I let, in, uh, I, let, I let it in and took everything. Yeah, um, I, I did, and I gladly let it take everything. So good. Because I think it's fucking brilliant. Al- album of the month. Yeah. Certainly, Fucking there was brilliant. nothing else in February that topped this. Yeah, what an album. Um, so we've been 
I guess I've been jamming that for about a month. Yeah. Yeah, I still am um, now. You know what the weird thing is, and I think I've, to- I've spoken to everyone about this, is that um, they seem to do Deftones better than Deftones do Deftones. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I don't know whether that's just because... That was going to be one of my things I was going to say. I think about Deftones, Deftones. Deftones have been, well, we've spoken about it quite a lot. Yeah. Inconsistent recently. Yes. I will will agree. Even though I love Deftones. I love Deftones. I love Deftones. But the last few albums I've just struggled to get into. Yeah, I didn't. Well, Jay Jay will vouch for me how much I tried to get into Gore. really wanted to like (laughs) Gore. But uh, yeah, it it just wasn't sticking for me, but... I think the thing is as well, like I think they were very canny with the singles that they picked before they pushed the album out because it's the ones where the vocals do closest match Chino's vocal approach and the guitar lines closest match. You know what Steph would do? It's got like got that really fat, chunky sort of um, around the fur, yeah, fat, fat sound. sound. Yeah. But then there's other tracks that you know weren't that are on the album that weren't pushed as a single. And you hear, wait, well, it's like a track. I've forgotten the name of the track now because I just kind of put it on Spotify. My phone's locked. Yeah. You've gone on the days where you'd read a CD liner and you'd read, yeah, like yeah. A, you know. But it's definitely towards the latter, latter part of the album. Mm. And there's one track that's got like a about 30 seconds of like full on kind of a real black metal vibe. Yeah. Mm. It has like proper like snare blasting. It's just really harsh. And you're like, you're like the fuck is that? Yeah, and you're like, you know, what's it? But, and they, but they do that in lots of different songs. So. I think it's almost like, you know, come for like, you know, the fact that we sound like Deftones, but actually what I what the reason why I said it's definitely the album of the month for me is because when you listen to it end to end, the more you can't just say, Oh, there are there are Deftones, you know, a better Deft I mean they are a better Deftones band at the moment, but <laughs> there's so much more. Um Oh, Definitely, yeah. they've got variation that you don't that you, you have dynamics all over the fucking show, oh, yes. which, which, which was a big one for me. Dynamics were fucking out the yin yang, yeah. And they've really from the last. I mean, I liked I liked the last album a lot, but you can tell they've so much stepped up the game on this big style songwriting. You know, musicianship, the fucking it's, it's the whole the box, nine yards. Yeah, because they the, did, the um, last album I think was it wasn't as varied as this one. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was more like brutal. the last one was like a brutal assault. This is more, I think that's you know, you've got gaps, like, aren't you? You've still got the brutalness in there. Well, yeah, you're like, soft yeah. you're like sophomore albums tend to be that, where it's like, oh, you know what, we did, we did our, the last album. Now we're going to do something that we want to do and add that into the mix. It's interesting because I um, they did a ask me anything on Reddit, and um, I noticed that they um, they kind of went somewhere really isolated in Wales. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say that. And it's just like, and it's kind of, you talking about like, you know, the last level was a bit more just straightforward mm. and this is a bit more varied. And then it was about a fortnight after I'd read the Ask Me Anything, I was reading a feature on um, Chaos AD. Mm. And it was going about, you know, like, Arise is great. No one's saying that Arise is a bad album or Beneath the Remains is a bad album, but they were what they were. Beneath the Remains was very much a solid death metal album. Arise was a bit more of a thrash album with death metal influences. Yeah. But then Chaos AD sounds nothing like either of those. Nice. And they were going about, it's like they hooked up with Andy Wallace, you know, he says, right, well, I'm going to record it in Wales, we're going to produce it in this other location in England, I can't forget what river there that was. But that's where it's like, right, slow it down, bring groove in, bring dynamics in, do it like, and I think it's Amen towards the end of Chaos AD. They recorded that in a castle, like Max. If you put headphones on at the mm. start of the song and turn the volume right up, you can hear like yeah, crows yeah. or seagulls oh, right. That's cawing. Cool. Because literally, it's a castle. It's castle ruins, so right. there's no ceiling. Yeah. Um, and I, that, you sort of think, is this thing that if bands isolate, you guys saw Chimera? Mm. They were in the middle of fucking. They were in Louth, in the middle of nowhere, recording at Chapel Studios yeah. in the middle yeah. of Lincolnshire. Fuck all to do. No rock clubs to go to, no bar. Right. Well, there was an A pub to go to, yeah. but there was no nightlife, really. <coughs> really. Which we stopped them. Yeah. <laughs> and you sort of think is the, it, when producers can get to do that and take yeah. them away from, I mean, you know, where are they from? Liverpool. Yeah. Huge city. Yeah. Huge city. Tons of distractions. Yeah. Was it a conscious decision by the band Let's the producer? Let's just fuck off down to Wales because Liverpool and Wales. Wales it? It's not too yeah. far, it's but I can get far, you away yeah. from your comfort zone and away yeah. from distractions. The shit mobile signal, you can't be dicking around on your phone. It's just like, right, 16 hours a day, 
focus on these songs and make it the best album you can possibly be. And I think it's paid dividends yeah. if, if, you if, know, if that's, that's, if that's, that's what the case. What yeah. was behind it? But to me, when they said, "Oh yeah, we're in Wales in the middle of nowhere," I'm like, "There must be something behind this." Like putting bands in the middle of nowhere yeah. <laughs> reaps rewards. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. Yeah, like location. I think when like writing and recording and stuff is definitely going to help. Like it's going to show. I don't know. I know you get it that okay if they were in the countryside I totally totally get that from some of the ambience on this album yeah the softer moments yeah yeah definitely, definitely. Um, standout track <sighs> I love it all <laughs> I'm sorry to be that guy but I fucking but I think there's one I mean I really love new, uh, two way mirror there's uh, new faces in the dark um, God is a good one. Uh, what's that one? The red. Oh, red? Um, red room. Red room. Fucking that one. I think two way mirror fees that is probably like a slight edge over everything yeah. else. But I'm good. I'm. I'm good. Go on. I'm good. <laughs> but I'm kind of like Terry. I know it's a cop out answer, but it's one that I do love listening from start to finish. Yeah. It is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I think it's one of those ones that. It could, it's a pretty long album, and you don't yeah. really, you don't really notice it either. Because I mean, it's not it's not like massive. It's not like you know sixty five minutes or so. It's like fifty minutes or something, yeah. um, which is a good time for for an album. Like you know, it stretches out long enough for you know the band to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, but also, um, you know, it hasn't gone on that long, and then it starts getting boring. Yeah. But I, I think this is one of those ones where I'm listening to it and. Before I know it, I'm like three quarters in. Yeah. Which is good because you, nothing's dragging then. It's like it's all taken effect. Yeah, if you're not and checking your watch and going, mm, yeah, yeah. If you're just like absorbing it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I want this on, like, like, you know, I do my three tests. Eight. Best in headphones. I will say that. Well, like, like that comes back to what you were saying Fucking dynamics. Love it. Dynamics love it in, in headphones. headphones is. Yeah. Match made in heaven, isn't it? Debbie, them cans that you've got that you've been like bragging about. We've got here. Debbie, <laughs> cans. <laughs> yeah, my Sony. So glad I invested in them. You had to like. I love them. You had to go go and put it in like some a kind special of, uh, place. Yeah, like, you'll definitely want uh, noise isolating now that everyone's got to self isolate and everyone's in one. Like, I need some peace and quiet, right? Got it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> put them bad boys on. <laughs> Thank um, you very yeah. much. This album is fantastic, and I urge everyone to go and uh, go and check it out. If on people are thinking about it, gushing. <laughs> um, have they been touring recently? Yes, they did a little they, they, mini. They, they did, did a little like mini tour. A mini. They did like three dates around the launch three, of it. There's yeah, like three or four dates. One in Manchester yeah. and one. I was, was one in Wales actually. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I was gonna. I was very, very fucking tempted to go to the uh, the one in Manchester. Very fucking tense. So, Mike, who we always see at Tech Fest, he, yeah. Why they went, yeah, they went to the Manchester or Liverpool mm. one. Apparently, it was insane because it bet. was only like were it fifty or seventy-five capacity. Yeah, one well, very big, well tiny fucking <laughs> venues, but like really intimate. And yeah, apparently, yeah, it was insane because I just bought them proper fucking jealous, mate. He's like, oh, it was like, like insane. I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like. Oh well, never mind. We'll get to see him at Tech Fest. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> yeah, it's don't looking, do that. It's looking don't well. Give me we hope. don't know this of yet, but the way things are going, you know, it's it's on the cards, isn't it? Yeah. And who knows? By the time this goes up, it might have even been cancelled. Yeah. Know. Know. So here comes the question: Will it make the list? At this uh, minute, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's making yeah. mine. I mean, that's it, I've already said it. It's, it's, it's my number one album in February. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think because we're doing 20 in 2020 yeah. and not a top 20, 10, yeah. it's blatantly going to hit a top 20. But I actually, I'm feeling fairly confident. It might be in the higher reaches. I think it'll be in the top 10. I think yeah. it would take, and bear in mind we are now halfway through March, mm. it's going to take the next sort of, what I mean, what's wrong, nine, nine and a half to really bounce that out of the top 10 yeah and um, and potentially we were talk, <coughs> talking about them earlier we have got a Deftones album coming mm. oh. so we're going to have to see how that stacks up <laughs> that could that could be potentially embarrassing for Deftones it could I'm a year that they're releasing an album and if they get outplayed by a young UK band yeah oh dear <laughs> I mean I mean 
you change as a musician, I guess, and I think yeah. that that's, yeah. that's what's kind of naturally happened, I think, with Deftones. And I think it's, I don't know, I think Deftones are one of those one of those bands that have um, always kind of, I don't know, the fans that Deftones have had stay with them. Like, for instance, yeah. I love Adrenaline, still. I love Around the First. Yeah. yeah. You were white pony. White pony, yeah. yeah. But, it, but doesn't, it doesn't quite translate to their newest stuff. Um, do you think after that it's just see I, I'm like I love all their albums up until then and then after that I just I tend to just pick tracks that I really like yeah yeah. yeah. there's no album from White Pony onwards there's no album that it's, I, I really like start great. to finish yeah, they're, they're like I do the first three yeah you know what I mean there's always yeah, tracks that I like I like that I like that track and, that, and I can cherry pick but See, that's another thing that's with hmm. what's all happened with COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. <laughs> um. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. What's the betting? There's going to be a band called that. What's the fucking betting? Uh, probably. <laughs> I think it probably already is. Yeah. But um, yeah, I can remember about three or four weeks ago, um, someone interviewing. I think Steptones. I don't know. I can't even interview because obviously I haven't got any new material out. But someone's interviewing. Um, it's coming now. Isn't guy, it? Yeah, it's so they're interviewing a guy out of the band. Can't remember who it was. I think it might have been the drummer or the turntable guy. Mm. And they were talking about White Pony. Now it's twenty years old, and they were like, "Oh yeah, this is, there's nothing confirmed, but we are looking into. Do we do something around <laughs> the twentieth anniversary of White Pony?" And you're like, "Please do." <laughs> now you're sort of thinking that's what you could do. You could release a new album, mm. to it on a twentieth anniversary, and then just basically play some of the new tracks at the end, or before play mm. three new tracks. Right, white pony in full, couple of hits from around the fur and adrenaline, and then chuff off. But now again, if this shit don't get sorted, yeah, that's that scuppered. So I'll say, go check out Loath's newest uh, album because I feel like I feel like we spoke about Deftones a lot over Loath, but <laughs> doesn't mm. that go to show that we're talking about a truly iconic band for uh, well, yeah. a, a new band's second release? That's look, fucking astonishing. I was going to say, just just look at what who we're talking about and the lineage and prestige that the Deftones yeah. have got, yeah. and Loath are right there alongside them yeah. in my eyes. And they're a British band as well, yeah. so, so not, and it's not tribalism, but you know, support, <laughs> yeah. you know, support, support the, the support UK, the UK scene. scene, yeah, mm. absolutely. So we're uh, we're going to go into a different review now, um, but we're going to cut it here because uh, we can't do it all in one. I need a break. Um, so, <laughs> we old. So uh, here's a ditty. Speak to you in a bit. Hey, so we're uh, we're back now to discuss uh, Viscera, um, which came out. I want to say like two weeks ago. Yeah, it was like the start of March. Yeah, so um, that were that's called Obsidian. Uh, yeah, March sixth that came out, and uh, what a great album this is as well, out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, and considering as well, it's uh, featuring uh, former members of uh, Heart of a Coward, Abhorrent Decimation, Martyr Defiled, Never Sell, Surfaces, and they apparently they formed in two thousand and nineteen. Fuck. So yeah, I thought there was uh, I thought there was this year, but uh, there's another notable thing that I've got down here with them, and uh, they take influences from Pantera, Meshuggah, At the Gates, Black Dahlia, Murder, and Kill Switch Engage. I can hear all of that in this. Yeah. And I've, do you know what? For one, I fucking love this album. I think it's I think it's really really good. Of a one of these albums you can just put on and fucking this is a gym album for me. Yeah. Great, I'm real. I'm, great, I'm real great, into it. Death album. Um, Historically, I've never really been into like melodic death metal. I don't know why. It's just not something that's like grabbed me. This is um, this is this is yeah, it's, fantastic. It's hit all the right buttons. It's got like I've always found that with other melodic death metal like artists and stuff, I've, I've not really been keen on some of like the soaring vocals and things like that. Which mm. this hasn't all of. Exactly. It's got it's got it's got pieces. Well, it's got bits not, of yeah. Heart of a Coward, which I fucking mm. loved. Jamie when he was in Heart of a Coward. Oh yeah, fucking um, that so, album was my album of the year. Yeah, it brings me back mm. to Heart of a Coward albums mm. in a way that it's just like that little element just thrown in there. Plus, awesome death metal. Um, See so yeah, how I've been I've been jamming this. Uh, you've been playing it through your cans, Terry. Oh, of course I have. <laughs> I do. I, every, everything gets the three the three way test for me. It's <laughs> in the giggity. It's in the car. 
in the cans on the speaker. Yeah, and I'm on and I'm on and through the sound losses. So and it sounds fucking yeah. And uh, another thing about this is production sounds fucking yeah, it's fantastic. It's great. It's so fucking heavy. Um, it's but it's also so fucking clear as well. You yeah. can hear everything in it. I like them little. Um, as you say, the middle of the mellow death and the, the melodic guitar parts, and some of them just come creeping in, yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're just in your face. It's just like, oh, I really like that. Yeah. yeah, it's just a nice, just a nice refreshing kind of. I would say they're not breaking the mold here at all, but I, feel I love like, it. I love it. I feel like for some people, there would be a brand new thing just like come out of nowhere as well, mm. which is really good. Like, I think I, I think I think I heard about them last Tet Fest. Yeah, but literally I just the rumours were they that had because he was there, wasn't he? Jamie was there because yeah. uh, Sean, who will come on to sp- speak about, I think he introduced me all the year before. I can't remember. Yeah, but he he was telling me then that he goes, yeah, he's got he's got a new band coming. So I think that was last year. Yeah, what watch out for him, kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it was nice to I don't know have that little heads up, if mm. you will, and then get like you know the couple of singles that came out. Um, but I imagine it would have been even fucking cooler if you'd never even heard of them at all. And you dropped the album. You hadn't heard the singles or anything, you just heard it and you're like, holy shit, where, where has this come from? Yeah, that's so, it. Uh, <laughs> standout tracks? I like, um, this, is it the second one? Immersed in Ire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my favourite. Little <laughs> <laughs> we'll be... Jay, you've been... Uh... You've been uh, suspiciously quiet. Yeah. Um, I think it's well. You, you kind of took the words out of my mouth a little bit, Terry, with the whole, you know, it's not breaking the mould. And I think no. for me that's why I'm being quite quiet because there's, for me there's no standing out tracks and that's the problem I've got with it is nothing stands out for me. There's no one riff or, you know, normally like you hear about like, oh, that, that track there or that, you know, and you hear mm. a riff and it fucking... And, and I don't get that. I just, it's not bad. You know, don't say this no, to anyone who's listening. Not. This is, it's not bad. It's but, not, it's not bad. It's not breaking the mark. It's just a it's, good it's, album. It's, I think. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a solid album, but yeah. there's nothing that's grabbing me all that I can latch onto. So, um, fair enough. I've only listened to it a couple of times, but there's nothing that's kind of, because if I hear something great, it'll kind of almost pull me out of passively listening and go, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll skip back and I'll start it from scratch again. What you know, not the entire album, mm. but if I'm midway in a song, I'm like fuck, that's great. I'll bounce back and go. What did I miss? Pay more attention to it. And I put it on a couple of times, which has very much been in the background and it's stayed in the background. Okay. Um, I'll probably give it another couple of listens, but yeah, I've probably been quiet because it, it's it's not like I say, it's not a criticism. It's not. I, I don't like it, but I don't think I can rave about it either. Okay, fair enough. I think this might be one that might win you over live. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. I think it might, I would, it might do. I would like, you know, you look at the pedigree. Yeah. You know, sort of hard crowd of RAD. Yeah. At least like them sort of listing Black Dahlia Murder as an influence. They've got a new album come out this year. If like Black Dahlia toured and chucked these guys as support. Yeah. That could be surprising. Like, wow, fucking hell, great. And they'll come into their own live. But yeah. Yeah. Speaking of lives, we'll. Uh... Right. Yeah, if if they are. <laughs> yeah, but um, our friend, uh, our friend Sean, he's just got back from a tour with these guys on the fa- the faces of death before it got pulled at the last minute. Yeah, before it got pulled, who had uh, Lorne, they had these guys, Lorne Shaw, decapitated, uh, and decapitated. beyond creation, weren't mm-hmm. they? Yeah, beyond creation. All yeah. is that. Mm. Oh, in fact, we're thinking of it as well. It jested, weren't it? Five at mm. one point. There, you got five bands for that. Yeah. There you go. Jesus, what a fucking lineup! Well, yeah, Sean. Um, hopefully, if we can uh, work it out, and well, we don't know when he'll be on after all this fucking coronavirus stuff <laughs> settles down. Well, um, without being negative, I'm not trying to make a joke, but I'm guessing he won't have many gigs to fill live at the moment. No, well, he did put a post up the other day saying uh, a lot of shit's cancelled for him. So we might get him soon. But yeah, our first ever ever guest on the podcast, and he's going to come on and talk about what he does and stuff and how we found that tour. Yeah. So, and we've, uh, look we've, out for that one. We've mentioned Sean many, many times on this podcast. He's, uh, he's an old friend of ours. So, yes. yeah, that, that should be cool. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, we're uh, probably going to go on to our next album review now. Um, I'm which forward to is, this one. 
I've forgotten what it was. Code Orange. Code Orange. Yeah. Code Orange. Um, so yeah, Code Orange is a band that I've never really been like super into. I've uh, I've listened to some of their older stuff. Mm. Um, I kind of clicked more with this album. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know why. It's really eclectic. I think as well. Um, well, well, my are we doing? We, we, we're going into this now then. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my two pence worth in as I think it's a uh, it's they've stepped they've stepped the game up again. Yeah. Because they start obviously they started off as Code Orange Kids on like, I Am King, which was more or less. You know, straightforward hardcore. Then they did, they went into Forever, which was more or less, you know, but they had the electronic elements, the, the like the glitchy, spazzy kind of bits in there as well. And then, then they've just, they've just honed it on this. I, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I think that's that's maybe the standout point for me is that where things in previous releases sometimes mm. felt sort of too out of left wing. Yeah, and it's almost like I don't know whether that went or not. I didn't get this on that yeah. album, on this album. I more just saw it as, well, yeah, that worked. You see, weirdly, you, that worked. You know, from you know from me. I mean, I fucking I'd love Forever. I banged on about Forever when it came out. And you you know, and yeah. we went to see him and all that. And I, I was up here as a so fucking twice. Shit. Yeah, did, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, because I saw him in fucking rescue rooms of all places. Oh, you'll see him three that, times. Yeah. You'll see him three times. Yeah, that was fucking Because we saw him, I saw well, so it's all, the twi- two times I saw him mm. was when they were on the was supporting with, Gajira with Carl yeah. Bond in Leeds. Yeah, and then that's we saw the him time. support in Tribune with Power Trip and Venom Prison mm. in Manchester. How are they live? Fucking brilliant. I've heard that they're, they're pretty <laughs> insane. Like, they are. And that kind of goes even more with their somewhat Slipknot sound in certain parts of this album. Yeah. I can see exactly why they would be on tour with Slipknot, but they fit. Yeah. They're not they're not too dissimilar, but they're not the same. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, that's it. It's, there's hints, but yeah, it's not like they put it on and I, if Slipknot did take them out of support, it's not identical. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, I, I definitely prefer this to Forever. Um, I think that was, I think it was okay. uh, like number... I'm happy that people have are actually, you know, I think it because like forever I put it as like number six or seven in my top ten for 2016, 2017, whatever year forever came out. Yeah, and my joke that I sent to uh, Pete and Matt's podcast was, you know, it's uh, environmentally friendly metal because it's full of recycled riffs. And I do remember at that Leeds gig, me and Pete were comparing notes like on certain songs where it's like. There's a, a riff which even Max Cavalera has mentioned now. There's like a riff in one of the songs, which is literally from the Sepultura's Clenched Fist track mm. from KSAD. Um, there's also one that's lifted from one of the songs from The More Things Change. And literally, no, but they don't, they don't make it about the entire song. It was always like a riff like played for like eight bars it. and yeah. they drop it. But literally, you knew it was. It's Clever. like, that's a Sepultura that's- riff. That's, That's clever rig. songwriting, though, it in is, my eyes. But you knew it; it was identical. And that's so it. So this is... one is '90s influenced still, mm. but there's no way I can go. In fact, if any, it's like Luke said. There's a couple of times I thought that sounds a bit like Slipknot, but it's not where I'm going. Do it's you know that riff copied. It's like it, but not. Yeah, it's the same kind of know... dynamics. It's the same kind of sound, but it's a different. It's a different riff. Do you yes. know what it screams yeah. to me as well? What what I've, 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 I've picked out of this? I mean, like you've said, Slipknot, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they got they got Alice the pro- in Chains. They got the programmer from Nine Inch Nails yeah. and Marilyn Manson. There's a track called Autumn and Carbine. Yeah. And that is so so Alice in Chains to me. Yeah. Is is fucking Agreed. unbelievable. They must have. But it's great. But I mean, look at the. Look at uh, let, yeah again. We'll go back to the um, Love album where we're saying, look at the pedigree who we're talking about. Yeah. Look we're at the lineage of bands. Little bands. We're that they're going about. against. You know what I mean? We're talking about Code Orange and we're talking about Alice in Chains. We're talking about fucking Slipknot. We're talking Sepultura. about fucking Sepultura. Machine Head. Machine Head. You know they're in that conversation. Yeah. yeah. You know. But this is the thing: is that. They're not in that conversation with younger people, so, younger, so they're already jumping ahead. Exactly. So younger people that you know 
weren't listening to Sepultura and Nine Inch yeah. Nails and Alice in Chains. To them, they sound it's, totally fresh. It's new. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, I, and I know that there's like a, I don't know, some kind of weird meme hatred for Code Orange. I don't get that. I, I don't that's get it. What I don't the, that's the it. one thing. I mean, they, they had it on forever. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of followed them into this album. And for one, I don't fucking get it. No. But I really don't. I can remember when they were supposed to play Bloodstock last year. Uh, and then Fume. they cancelled. Fume City. Um, yeah, well, so they were, So I think there was a bit of Fume City, but then when they cancelled, they went, oh, we're not going to play because we want to finish recording the new album. Yeah. Then it was, oh, thank fuck, I didn't want to watch them anyway. And it's just like, you fucking selfish pricks. It's just like, you know, just go to fucking bar and, you know, get a pint, go to fucking food court, play on Dodgers. Go have a piss. Have a piss, go back <laughs> yeah. to your tent and have a wank or something. Come <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you <know>, in wank. <laughs> I don't get there's tons of bands that look like that. I'm not bothered about but yeah. I don't, oh god I wish they weren't on the bill it's just like great that's when I'll get some food that's when I'll have a beer at yeah. least as well you know thinking about it at least Bloodstock have had the fucking thought it's like right I'm going to put something new on I'm going to put something yeah. fresh on yeah like you said it's not not everyone's cup of tea it's, but, it's not everyone's cup of tea but it's a new up and coming band yeah that are getting in front of audiences and would have sold tickets yeah, yeah. you know and that's it a festival's a business at the end of the day mm. Um, but yeah, I don't get this whole. No, you know. I don't get this whole hate. I mean, I don't like uh, I Am King as much as I do, for because that's more of a straight, you know, hardcore. straight hardcore. Yeah, there's, there's, well, there's it, there, you, there are there are glitchy bits. But it's what you said clearly. They wanted to go, grow they, and leap from their peers. They they do they do in in every single one. But this this fucking track, man. I mean, it just fuck this. Fucking hits so fucking hard. Yeah, yeah. I just it it gets something so fucking visceral in me. I want to put my fucking See, self through a wall. I because I'm not. I don't know if the, I'm not really great with the instruments, but you have both listened to it a fair chunk of time. Oh yeah. So track four, you and you alone. Yeah. Is that a triangle? With Probably. Do, 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 I think it's, it's a It might be. I think it's a. It may even be a cowbell. Yeah. Cowbell. That's what I'm trying to work out. That ding a ding a ding. Oh, it works so well. Do 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 do. Ding a ding a ding a ding. Do 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 do. Ding a ding a ding. So like that, that second track was just like rambling talking. He just goes. Yeah. Like fucking hell! I nearly shit myself when I was driving <laughs> listening to that. It's... Do you know what that reminded me of? <laughs> Ion dissonance. Yeah. It's just fucking. I was like <laughs> fucking hell. The fucking space man. But it's but the thing is, it's like yeah, it jumps and it stops and it's staccato. And normally I don't really dig that kind of stuff, mm. you know, I've never really been into that sort of Dillinger sort of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they can temper it with that groove. I think a lot yeah. of it stays in beat as yeah. well. So where yeah. like something really kind of mathy and scatty might kind of go into something jarring, this is jarring, but, but it, it comes back, back in beat. beat. Yeah. The first time I heard that the fucking stops in this, I yeah, yeah. fucking like what the my jaw was on the nearly on the floor. I, I was like, what the fuck? That's what I meant by when Could, I was when I heard them, I was just like cut. I was just kind of like did did that work? I it think, did. I think it did. You and have I, to listen to I, it I again and go I don't that really how. works. See, yeah. See the thing is because this came out and um and arranged for um the car MOT on the Saturday. Mm. But even on the Friday, I give it a bit of old, a bit of an old listen. Anyway, so I probably listened to it like three or four times on the yeah, Friday. Yeah. But on the Saturday, so much to unpack and listen to it. And so, like, I'm following sort of Helen. Mm. Um, we drove back, and we had to go back and pick up the car and everything. Yeah. And it was just like on the drive back, I said, "I'm gonna have to listen to something else." Because I probably <laughs> it puts to you about in a little two bit. Two days, yeah. I've yeah. listened to it ten times, <laughs> and I'm gonna get sick of it. Yeah. I'm going to actually have to ration how often I listen to this because I don't want to get to the point where like, oh, I don't want to hear this again. Mm. So I actually kind of purposely took a break. I thought, I can't be like it were in the days where you bought a CD. Yeah. And I'm like, I've got Spotify. There's tons of shit I can listen to. Mm. I just need to have a bit of a palate cleanser. Yeah. I don't want to be sick of this album two months down the line and go, mm. oh, it's still going to always be a great album, but I don't want to be bored of listening to it. And do you know what we were saying about life? This is 14 tracks. Yeah. It's low 14 as well. <laughs> this is 14 tracks and it doesn't feel like a 14 track album. No, it doesn't. And again, at it's, all. 
again, it's not like it's super long. It's like but, four, forty-eight minutes. Yeah, but there's it's enough. Not even fifty, is but it? But that's like a there's enough variety. Like that's, that's a real nice like, yeah. round number for an amount of tracks I love if that you're the a varied band. Underneath singles, the album closer. Yeah, yeah. it works so well. I wasn't ex- album closer. I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting that to be like track two. I was, I was expecting to swallow in the rabbit hole to be expect, like the opener, I which it is. Un- I thought I thought underneath yeah. was going to be track four or six. Yeah. Almost like the Unforgiven or Nothing Else Matters <laughs> in the Black yeah. Album. I'm like, yeah. it's going to be either a third of the way in or two thirds of the way in. So, yeah, to have it as a closer, but you're like, that fucking fits as a closer so mm. well. But I don't know. You got, a, you got a standout track? You and You Alone. <sighs> Gotta be You and You Alone. Did, <sighs> No, so you see, see the next track after this uh, in fear. In or, fear. Um, the one one after this is yeah, you and you alone. Yeah, that's that's my standout buyer. Yeah, this is that all, that, but, li- that live. I love it all. Oh, God, I can't imagine the pits. I love like it that. all, and I'll give you a, a, a little tidbit. So far, this is my album of the year. Oh. Yeah, so you put it on Facebook. And, mm, I so don't far, I can do that. So far. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely in my. Can I say ten? Yeah, yeah, it's in my ten. I mean, I think my, my albums of the month, so January's Storm, February's Loathe, mm. March is this. Mm. I can certainly say that. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, I can give an album of the month for each month. Have you um, you got like the beginnings of a list already? I have. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got to ask. I think there's maybe like because if we're doing if we're doing a twenty this year. Yeah. I've got, I've got off to keep track of things that I've liked and gone right, and then when it comes to the end of the year, I'm going to be like, oh, oh look at all these albums. I've got. What, you know what, really need, what you can roll that down to so basically every three months you need five albums. I mean, I, I think I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, thus far, I think I've probably got five on there. Four yeah, five. I think I have. Let's have a look. Let's have a quick I look. Mean, I've not written anything yet. I think it's five now with Code Orange. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I've got, yeah, Stone, uh, Loathe. I've also got the Bird Problems EP that I fucking loved. Yeah, five. I put, um, no, six. I put six. a track on that on the last episode's playlist, I think. I've got six um, so far. I've also six. got, I've also got mm. Intronaut. Yeah, that's... Intronaut uh, I've yes. got... Um, and this is number five. I've got um, Great American Ghost, Power 3 Terror. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah. See, I've got brilliant. a slice of like kind of seven. It's a tribute to like seventies, eighties AOR and on the fifth album, Night Flight Orchestra. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like proper cheese, but it, it does like stadium seventies, eighties stadium like Boston type rock, and it does it so well. And you think, well, you know, if tons of bands have made a career off of Ape Sabbath, yeah, why can't you like ape sort of classic when like you basically had no internet no piracy and bands were making millions from selling nothing but CDs and touring and filling big arenas but it's really upbeat really cheese you know as far away from heaven as you can get but it's really kind of positive songs yeah. really like upbeat so if if I want to kind of give myself a bit of a lift it's like kind of cheesy you can imagine it is it, is it like montage yeah it's yeah. like it's montage is it it's training like, montage or yeah but eight is training montage it's <laughs> like yeah it's like survival <laughs> yeah. well the, the hilarious thing is it's a side project but it's got like two three members from soil work right it's got dude from uh, bassist from our chenemy right and another okay, no. but the, it's the i've just got let's we've yeah. got heavy heavy day jobs yeah but let's yeah. just do this but they're like five albums in and they will put their play Bullstock as well if Bullstock goes ahead but that's, yeah it's, that's clearly like a, I got like ideas but I can't use them in the band I can't band. use them in the band yeah. yeah but like they were saying that's what they grew up with yeah so you know before they became the Melodeth artists that they were but it's just like yeah it's a slice of cheese but it's if, I, I fucking love cheese so yeah. both real food and cheesy music so <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely mine that could uh, I think I don't think that'll fall out of my top 20 for this, this is fucking something special for me. Yeah. I really fucking like this. I had this. an inkling when I saw your status the other day. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's my oh. fucking album of the year, and yeah. I was like, oh, Code I Orange. That's Code Orange. Mm. I, I knew it straight away. Like that's Code Orange. Mm. Didn't even need to ask him. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't like, even need to <laughs> ask like, him. like Friday the 16th of yeah. March. I'm like, fucking all that is. <laughs> <laughs> like, not 16th of March. Look, that's uh, yeah, 16th of March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, not that is. Yeah, well, it's gonna take. 
it's going to take something real fucking good to shift it this year. So the gaunt, I think the gauntlet's been laid down. Yeah. So Deftones over to you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but if you think about our top tens anyway, mm. you know we don't really tend to focus on established artists, and even our episodes. Yeah. We don't. I know. Obviously, we did the big detailed tool there's, review. Yeah, there's some that fucking. But, fly in there, I yeah. mean, I don't even. Did we do Slipknot last year? I think we did. We did, but it was the lost. It was a, that it was lost, the lost one, episode. wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the <laughs> lost, the lost recording. God damn it. Um, but yeah, it's. I think you know, sort of bands now that like eight albums in. You sort of like, well, you know. Plus, as well, from a ticket point of view. <laughs> It's cool to see younger bands because you get to see them for less anyway. Yeah. So, and I mean, and you're not paying like fucking forty quid for merch either. I bet you a load of bands though will record stuff now because they'll do merch. Yeah, yeah. They'll, what you do now is record like an eight-track album and make sure you do a merch bundle. I mean, look at the Acacia Strain. It's doing yeah. Two-track EP every month. Right? Yeah. And I do think though. And that's literally like the Rob Flynn strategy, isn't it? Yeah. I do think that we're going to get a load, a lo- the next couple of bands coming through will have this as a blueprint. Yeah, I've yeah, got. yeah. I can, I can see it now. You think it's going to be like a future cult? Yeah, classic. I can, I can see it. I can see it happening now. I mean, the thing is, um, oh, harm's way. Mm. They're like hardcore and electronics because they're mm. really heavy into Godflesh. They even admit that. They went, mm. Yeah, we're not going to lie. Like, God, and that's a huge 90s band. Yeah. I mean, I fucking love every like a lot, of, a lot of my friends, because I, from Sheffield, like a few years older than me, they're always like an album ahead of me. Right. So, like, I prefer Morbid Angels, Blessed Are the Sick, their yeah, right. first album, first mm. album, Alters of Madness, and it's the same with like Godflesh. I'm like, I fucking love Pure. They're like, No, 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 Street Cleaner. First you album. see, they're one that never. <laughs> Never did anything oh, God for Godflesh are amazing. Godflesh are amazing. And that's the thing, I, I'm almost kind of worried for Harm's Way because I think if they bring out a new album this year or early next year, mm. because they already did Hardcore with Electronics, people are going to accuse them of being Code Orange copyists, mm. but they've already admitted that they've, you know, they like to do fast Hardcore, but then slow electronic like Godflesh like a kind of doomy oppressive vibe mm. so they've already admitted they do stuff like that I can imagine like journalists not doing the research but oh they're just copying Code Orange and it's, it's like well they're already off, doing yeah. that shit so what, what happens then when people start like accusing people of copying Code Orange when Code Orange have apparently copied themselves <laughs> <laughs> the world explodes well yeah I think there will be like Terry says there will be a lot of people hopping on this bandwagon like what we Definitely. said about Fit for an Autopsy oh what's that band The Version's Crown everyone's now saying it sounds like I said that in the last year yeah. I said everyone's going to try and copy the Fit for an Autopsy sound and yeah. apparently that Version's Crown everyone's saying that the singer's just trying to sound vocally right. like the last Fit for an Autopsy I mean, record alright I'm, da- I'm down with that <laughs> but you're going to get you, you're going to get it in this anything that's Kind of new yeah. and like, you know, shocks, kind of shocks the system, breaks the mold a little bit. Yeah. Like this, people are going to copy it. They're going to go right, okay. Um, we look want at, a slice of that pie. We're going to try our hand. Look at, at Hollywood. This. You know, yeah. they made the Batman trilogy. Yeah. But then Warner suddenly went. But that's it, because basically Batman Begins came out the same year as Iron Man. But Marvel had already caught on. Like Iron Man had the kind of the thing at the end. Yeah. Meet Nick Fury, set up an extended universe. Mm. They'd already come into Nolan's vision of just a self contained, this is just a Batman trilogy. Mm. And then they had to kind of rush and panic and try and catch up with an extended and, it, and it's a fucking mess. Yeah. Because they were like five, six, seven years behind the curve. And you're just going to get the same with bands now. They're mm. going to go, all oh, right, so what we need to do is copy Code Origins, have some hardcore mm. riffs and some like loops and sequences. It's like, yeah. that doesn't make you successful. No, mm. and none of it would probably be as good as this. No. No, probably nowhere near. So, but yeah, you do. You you see something successful and you want to ape it. It's yeah, like I said, it's human nature. Yeah, variation is evolution. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if you've been living under a rock um, and you've not heard anything about this album, which would be, to be honest, it'd be pretty hard to miss if you've been looking There's on been the a internet. Lot of online push for them. Yeah, yeah there, there are all internet over, magazines, all over media. I mean, but I bet you they must check have it out. a ton of tours lined up until all this shit kicked in. Oh, did you, did you see the um, the thing that they did? They did a... 
a live a, stream. A, a live stream of an album release party to an empty room because yeah. we had to, yeah. Because of the coronavirus and stuff. Cool. It was like, fucking hell, if that's, well, that's going to be the future. If you can play in front of no yeah. audience and throw it down like there is did, an audience. I haven't did watched you see it yet, it? but everyone's just like, this is fucking amazing. Mate, they were playing like there was that room was packed out. It didn't think because sometimes you know what I mean. If there's an empty room, there's, there's a thing the, you the just band to drops the energy. Yeah, zone it in a little bit. Like yeah. oh, I will just play through this. They were going fucking mental. Like it, like that room was full of people, full of energy. You know what I mean? They were fucking off for it. All stream. It was through Twitch. Oh, cool. Well, the live streamed it all through Twitch, and then there was a a live thing like a virtual merch table where if you click the link in the thing took you to the online store took you to the thing nice. so you could buy the merch <laughs> but, but there was see... only merch that they did specifically for that release show really yeah. I'm like finally we're living in 2020 <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was thinking you know that fucking PS fucking uh, virtual reality oh yeah 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 you could probably fucking get that one time and just be like all, right, all around the stage Look around right. yeah <laughs> that is a fucking great idea but I mean, uh, that might be coming if, like, mm. you know, we're isolated for a uh, yeah, for, if we're isolated, for you know, if it's future. a year-on-year year thing, and we have to be isolated for certain amount, uh, certain periods of the year. We're living in the fucking apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, but you know, I'm not panicking. Um, no, well, 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 you're not panicking in your quarantine. Go check this album out if you exactly. want. Exactly, you've, yeah. you've got all the time now uh, to stream in fact, music. In fact, go check all the albums out we've uh, rambled on about this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go check out Loathe. Go check out Viscera. Go check out Code Orange. Um, we're on a a bit of a lean episode. Yes, we are. Uh, but I think that's fine. I think that's just what's naturally going to happen without us putting like tracks in the middle and stuff. Yeah, and no lives to bring <laughs> yeah, to you yeah. now. What the no, fuck? No you would have had, you'd have had two gig reviews, but yeah, mm. shit. <laughs> uh, you're laughing, Joe. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it, I'm laughing, but it's a visual meme. I can't oh, really, okay. I can't really explain it. Other than thinking, maybe we'll have to do like merch reviews. We'll have to buy our favourite T-shirts and try and describe the designs. Um, if... <laughs> So it's like a black T-shirt, uh huh, with a band name on the front, uh huh, and like a, a skull. It's Imagine like a skull. A, it's like a skull in its dripping. And with like it, green and red except stuff. Except it's like a lake or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're both describing the same T-shirt. Aren't we? Is it fit for an autopsy? <laughs> one's in red, one's in grey. <laughs> God. So uh, yeah, I think we're going to call it that for an episode. Um, thank you very much for uh, for listening. Uh, yeah, we might be out. back soon, or we might be back never, <laughs> depending on what happens. Wow, <laughs> those are some real like and on grim fortunes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go check us out on um, our Instagram, and uh, I think we might have a Twitter. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, we we've have. got we've obviously got the uh, metalhealth.co.uk, which is our blog, and um, so you can go check out the episodes there as well. Um, and yeah, speak to you next time. See you Bye. later. Bye.